Transformative is a series of short films that try and explain the history of fashion photography as seen from the perspective of the stylist, the makeup artist and the hairdresser. Bob Garland, yes, thank you very much for joining me to do this. Um, can I start by asking you a very simple question? Mm -hmm. When did you start and why did you start becoming a makeup artist? When did I start becoming a makeup artist? Um, I think I started in around about, um, I'd say 1985. Right. Because originally I was a hairdresser. Um, I was a hairdresser and um, I used to wear a lot of makeup and a lot of very strange makeup. My um, motto was, it's not about being beautiful, I want to be noticed. Right. So, um, yeah, I would paint pictures on my face. Um, uh, one of my idols was a makeup artist who worked for um, Blitz magazine yeah. called Yally Back. Oh, really? and, um, I didn't I used, know he was he, your idol. He was my idol when I first started. Remember, I, I was living in Australia, and um, so I get Blitz magazine, and this guy, I mean, originally I thought it was a girl, yeah. um, would do these crazy sort of like makeups. And, you know, like the lips would be here, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and the eyes yeah. would be here. And I worked in, or well, I had my own hairdressing salon, and um, every day um, I always wanted to be a different character and um, I would be a different character. And um, so, sometimes inspired by what Yali did, I'd sort of come into the salon to do someone's hair, yeah. and I'd have all this misplaced makeup on, you know. <coughs> um, I was very fond of wearing um, colostomy underwear as outer <laughs> garments. Of course you were, Valia. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, I, I loved being s strange and different and, you know, I just, I just wanted people to go like, oh, she's crazy. And so, um, then I started, so uh, we would do, um, we would do uh, our own hair shows. We were doing like yeah. hair shows um, on a circuit. We were like traveling to, you know, the world. And um, I would always do the makeup. Yeah. And I quite enjoyed doing the makeup. And then I thought, well, maybe there's a career in that. Yeah. And um, so I started doing session work. And in Australia, you have to do hair and makeup. Really? So I, in the beginning, I'd do, I think, yeah. really good hair yeah. and really bad makeup. Right. And um, so, you know, I sort of like. So naturally you became a makeup artist? I naturally became a makeup artist and I was self-taught. I was self-taught as a hairdresser. Thanks for the tea. Self-taught as a hairdresser, self-taught as a makeup artist. Yeah. And um, when I came to England in 1994, um, I didn't really mind whether I was a hairdresser or a makeup artist right. because I could do both. So what, what sort of took you down the makeup artist as opposed well, to hairdresser? Because um, in, well, like I said, in Australia, you have to be, uh, you have to do both. Yeah. In England, um, you're not taken seriously unless you are a specialist yeah. in one field. And I could do both. Yeah. So it'd be quite funny because um, on one shoot, I'd turn up and um, Eugene Suleiman would be doing the hair yeah. and I'd be doing the makeup. Yeah. And then on another shoot, yeah. um, Lisa Butler would turn up. She yeah. would be doing the makeup and I'd be doing the hair. I remember one shoot, I even cut Lisa's hair. But <laughs> what actually happened was um, people started booking me more and more for makeup. Right. So that's and kind of interesting. And the sort of hair, natural selection. Yeah, the hair just fell away. Right. And because I had already been doing hair for about 15 years, yeah. I was kind of like, well, I'm bored of that now. Yeah. And I really like to paint, and yeah. I like colour, and I like colour chaos, and I like the whole idea of all of that. So let's embrace it. So yeah. do, you ever, do you ever feel when you s work with Sam or Eugene or whoever, oh, I wish I could do that because you no. aren't doing it right? No. Right. Um, <laughs> when I'm with um, great hair people, and yeah. I often am, yeah, sure you are. I, I never think about it because they're right. great, they're brilliant. You yeah. know? And I couldn't, I couldn't do it now. You know, I don't, right. I, you know, it's gone. I, when you lose that constant sort of like repetition of dressing or cutting or all that kind of thing, you know, you just lose it. You yeah. have to keep doing it, you know. Um, obviously, you and I have worked together a lot. Yes. So I tried very carefully not to choose all images that we'd authored together. Yeah. But uh, there's lots of things you've done with me which I thought are incredible. Yeah. Um, so this is a shoot for Christian Dior. Yes. 
Um, Christian Dior, when John Galliano was first there, I think probably his fourth season or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, just tell me a little bit about how this makeup look came around. Um, well, the when I first came on board, because you'd already done a few seasons I'd of Dior. I'd done a couple of seasons of Dior. You'd done a couple of seasons mm. with Shalom, and it was mm -hmm. that kind of vibe. And when we all came together for this shooting, uh, well, for the very first one, actually, yeah. um, it just felt like a very electrifying moment. Yeah. Because, you know, here was John, Stephen, Nick Knight, you know, Sam, we had Jane Howe. Yeah. And we could do anything. Mm. And this was advertising. Mm. And, um, you know, you've got to sell the handbag. Mm. You know, advertising before that had kind of felt like it needs to be slick, highly polished. Yeah. You know, here we were sort of going at it a completely different way. And, you know, it wasn't about a certain woman, it was about every woman. And we, I think for me, I wanted, well, first of all, you came across and sort of said, you know, we're going to be using cars, yeah. but not in the way that we would normally do it. Yeah. I'm going to be shooting inside the car. I'm going to be halfway up a ladder. She, you know, it's all going to be balanced. It's all going to be quite precarious. And, you know, it was kind of like, well, let's get sexy. Mm. Let's get sweaty. Yeah. Let's get filthy. Yeah. And so we did. And, you know, the more sort of, you know, spray dirt I put on there and the more oil and and you know really I mean there was no hair and there was no makeup the hair was wet and and it just looked gorgeous and sexy and it was just a, it was brilliant and you say there's no makeup so I mean what we do yeah. I mean what I used to do and we started there yeah. with the um the Dior campaigns was I'd start with beautiful skin I'd mm. make the skin look lovely um, you know there would be kind of a uh, contour a bit of blush blah, 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 something minimal on the eyes um, so we would start there and then as we got into the picture um, and very quickly into the yeah. picture you know more eight hour cream would go on you know more yeah. oil then pick up the spray dirt and and the thing was everything what i liked about these um uh, shootings and because we were shooting on 10 8 yeah what i loved about it was um everything happened on set mm -hmm. um because sometimes you can be in the makeup room doing hair and makeup yeah. and styling and and it's there and you do this look but it's n you can't know what it's going to be like until mm -hmm. you're actually on set so we would you know, get right on set and start doing it all there. Yeah. And it was great because it was very um, organic and spontaneous and, you know, it just felt electrifying, you know, because what the um, public don't see is like, you know, there is Sam up a ladder probably coming in from the top trying to do th his thing <coughs> I'm coming up from underneath you know because on 10 8 you see absolutely everything mm. and if we don't get it right we're at fault you know it, it's down to me and Sam and everybody else involved so we were very we were all hands-on and yeah. it, it was great I loved it and the sessions were four five days long yeah, unheard of nowadays. Yeah, I know. You know, and um, but we had time to make it work. Develop it to make yeah. it work. I, I remember whole days with yeah. you. Well, you know, the first day you'd try everything and nothing would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember the second days we'd try yeah. everything and nothing would work. So yeah. that that luxury of time that John gave us when he was working yeah. in it was, was fantastic because you could try things and see if they worked, look yeah. at them with a fresh yeah. eye the following morning and build on that. Mm. So, you know, you, we needed that time. Yeah. But you're, you're quite right in saying that when we went there, it felt like we were breaking all the rules. It felt like well, we, we were, were you know, doing it's something like, different. So we have these gorgeous outfits and you're going to get oil and dirt all over them. And, you know, I, I would say to John, like, you know, is that okay? And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. You know, we're, we're creating an image here. It's, it's not about... 
you know, yeah. it's just not that thing because John was is so amazing that he would he would come at the campaign from an artistic eye, mm. not a selling clothes eye. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was yeah. He just wanted to do beautiful images, and he did. We did. And bundles of clothes sold. And bundles of clothes sold. Yeah, yeah, because I think it was the first time. It felt like the first time that Dior was aimed at the young, mm -hmm. not um, you know, it wasn't fuddy duddy. It was mm. yeah. It felt like you know, young girls on the street would wear that. Yeah. You know. Well, I remember we did this. And I think, <coughs> you know, what on earth are they going to say back at the office? HQ. Yeah, back at HQ. Yeah. Um, and it, they, to their credit, they ran it worldwide. Mm. You know, mm. this is girls covered in car grease. Yes. Um, and so I was like, are you, am I right in thinking that in Japan they wanted to make makeup yes. that looked yes. like that? Absolutely. But also what was nice about this particular uh, shot was that, who is that other person? Now, is mm. that a man? Is that a boy? Is that a girl? Yeah. So there was like an ambiguity there that um, we weren't sure. And it was that was a little bit risque. Yeah. Well, the know. first campaigns were with Giselle. Well, yeah. Giselle yeah. and Rhea Darren. Yeah. Yeah, which were very much sort of. Yeah, very girl on girl. Yeah. yeah.